Hello, everybody. Welcome to Israel's Church of Living God. I'm Brother Rodney, and Brother Caleb will be reading today. Uh, this will be the final lesson or the final in, uh, of this leg, and it's called Our Black Roots, Part 4, Israel's Home Going. Israel's Home Going, because one day we are going home. Amen. This is not our home here. In America, this is not our home. This is our home while we're here, but our home is really Israel. That's our home. And so we're going to show you today Israel's home going. And this is what we come to keep the Sabbath for. This is why we're here every day, because we know that our people are not going to be in this situation that we're in forever. In this country, neither in the, any of the other countries that the Lord had led the children of Israel captive into. So we're going to start off at Psalm 105. Psalm 105, because the Lord promised us this. He promised the children of Israel this. Psalms 105, Psalm 105 and 7. Go ahead and read it. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Uh -huh. He has remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. See, he remembered this covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. So this covenant shall stand forever until the Lord does his, uh, uh, carries this out or performs this. Go ahead and read. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. Uh-huh. And confirm the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. And unto Israel for an everlasting covenant. What is it? Go ahead. Saying, unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, uh -huh. the lot of your inheritance. Now, he said, I'm going to give you the land of Canaan for the lot of your inheritance, Israel. This is a covenant that God has with the children of Israel. Now, are the children of Israel... In that land right now? They're not in that land right now. Because we're going to show you that when the children of Israel return, the Lord will be here too. And not only will the Lord be here, but David will be here too. Let's go now. Let's go. We're going to, we're going to read the definition of Canaan real quick. Because we want you to know where this is. And what we're dealing with. Canaan, right there. <coughs> It's out of the Bible Dictionary. It's Canaan. The country between the Mediterranean and Jordan. Given by God to the, the Israelites. This land was given to uh, the Israelites by God. Go ahead and read. It says, Holy Land after the captivity. Holy, the Holy Land after the captivity. Now, what's the Holy Land? That is Israel. Yes, sir. Y'all ain't got to be afraid to say it. You know, you should be happy today because, look, this is where we're going to one day. I might not see it, but I know our children are probably going to see this. So we should be happy today. Go ahead and read some more. You finished with that? Uh, it says Palestine. Palestine. And where is Palestine? That's Israel, modern-day Israel. Sir. Let's go to Isaiah, the first chapter. Isaiah, the first chapter. And we're going to pick it up in verse 7. Isaiah 1 and 7. When you get it, go ahead and read. Your country is desolate. Uh-huh. Your cities are burned with fire. Now look, this is what the Lord is telling the children of Israel. He said, your countries are desolate. Right? Your cities are burned with fire. And this is what happened to Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. Your land, strangers devoured it in your presence. See, and, and, and they're still devouring our land in our presence. Yes, sir. And most of us don't even, even understand that that is our land. Go ahead and read. And it is desolate, as overthrown by a stranger. Uh-huh. And the, and the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage. Go ahead. As a cottage in a vineyard, as a lounge... In the garden of cucumber. Uh-huh. As a besieged city. As a besieged city. Now, we're going to read you something right here about that, uh, about Israel. And we're going into the last two million years. And we're going to read from here. Stop right there. 
Since the last two million years. That's page 405. All right. Here. Yeah, yeah. For nearly 19 years, 1900 years. For nearly 1900 years. Go ahead. Palestine, as the Roman, had renamed Israel. Stop right there. See, the Romans renamed uh, Israel Palestine. But for nearly 1900, so that 1900 years, that would put us back to the first century. 1900 years, what happened? Yes, sir. It says, for nearly 1900 years, Palestine, as, as the Romans had renamed Israel, was ruled and fought over by foreigners. Stop right there. Now, this country, Israel, the Palestine, has been ruled over and fought over for 1900 years by strangers. Yes, sir. By strangers. Now that's that, that's really something. Almost two thousand years, this land has been fought over by strangers. Like the Lord said, "Look, your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers, strangers devoured it in your presence. It is desolate, as overthrown by strangers." And strangers have been fighting over this land for nineteen hundred years. But go ahead and read. Yes, sir was ruled and fought over by foreigners, Romans, Byzantines, Sadinid, Persians, Arabs, Crusaders, Turks, all controlled it at various times. Mm -hmm. So now, who's controlling it now though? You got the Arabs that's controlling it now, and you got the ones known as the Jews, which are really Edomites. And we're going to show you a little bit of that today because, you know, I had a brother call me this morning saying that, uh, you know, he was learning from some Israelites in, in Chicago. I ain't calling no names. Come on, brother. And saying that they, uh, you know, were saying that Esau is the white man. And I kept telling people, if Esau is the white man, then that means he's not Esau no more. Because Esau is a Hebrew. You can't change your pedigree. So if you are a Hebrew... And then so a male comes and lay with a Hebrew woman, then that child is no more Hebrew than is he. And then the Israelites, our brothers, these Israelites, they're the main ones saying the man carried the seed. But then they don't seem to apply that when it comes to Esau. You finish that? No, sir. It says the few Jews who remained there were subject people. Uh-huh. Now. Let's go to Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Isaiah 34, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 34 and 1. Go ahead and read. Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken, ye people. Mm -hmm. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein. Now look, the Lord is talking to the world right here. He's not talking to just Israel. He said, look, come near ye nations, with an S. Hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. The world and all things that come forth of it. Go ahead. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. Stop right there. Has the indignation... Been upon all nations already? No. The Lord has not poured out his indignation upon all. Because, you know, some people want to make this just Jerusalem or Israel in 70 AD. And say, well, this is what the Lord is talking about in 70 AD when he pulled out his destruction on Jerusalem. But then he said all the earth and the world. Yes, sir. He didn't say uh, uh, nation. He said nations. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. Go ahead and read. And his fury is upon their armies. Uh -huh. He have utterly destroyed them. Go ahead. He have delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out. Uh -huh. And their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. Go ahead. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. Now see, he's putting a time period on it now. He's telling you when it's going to happen. He's saying, look. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. All the hosts of heaven were dissolved in 70 AD. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Don't you know if something like this had to happen, people would be still writing about this? 
and still looking up in the sky to see if it's going to happen again. Go ahead and read. And all their hosts shall fall down, uh -huh. and the leaf fall off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Uh -huh. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. Stop right there. Who is Idumea? Esau. That's Esau, ain't it? So he said, look, it's going to come, my sword will be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. Now, I just got a question for you. That, you know, because some, now, Idumea, that's the Greek name for Esau or the Edomites, right? Now, but if this is talking about uh, black Edomites, show me some black Edomites that's uh, wreaking havoc on the earth so much where the Lord got to uh, bathe his sword from heaven upon these people. And everybody uh, that's, they call himself an Israelite, most people are saying that this one that called himself uh, a Jew, that's Esau, the white man. But he said his sword going to come down on Idumia. Not the white man. Idumia, those are not white people. Those are Hebrews. Yes, sir. And that's why we say the one that called himself a Jew, that is Edom. Because, well, I don't even go there. We, we, I'll say that for later. Oh, everybody knows what he's up to, right? I mean, most people knows what he's up to. Amen. That's got some understanding. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. It says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, uh -huh. it shall come down upon Idumea. Go ahead. And upon the people of my curse. Go ahead. To judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats. Uh -huh. With the fat of the kidney of rams. For the Lord has sacrificed... In Bozrah. That's another name for the Edomites. He has a sacrifice in Bozrah. Go ahead and read. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. Uh-huh. And a unicorn shall come down with them. And the bullocks with the, with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood. Their land shall be soaked with blood. Go ahead. And their dust made fat with fatness. Uh-huh. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. It is the day of the Lord's vengeance. Go ahead, for what? In the year of recompenses uh -huh. for the controversy of Zion. It's a controversy in Zion, so he said, look, I'm going to recompense. I'm going to pour out my vengeance. Now, wait a minute. If he's going to pour out his vengeance for the controversy of Zion, then somebody got to be inhabiting Zion for him to do this, don't it? Yes, sir. And, but he said it's going to come down on Idumea. Those are Hebrews. Those are Edomites. So where are the Edomites there? In Zion or Jerusalem. I can play him, brother. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Amen. Keep talking about Esau is the white man. Esau is the white man. No, he's not. Otherwise, he wouldn't be the white man. He would, uh, 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 Esau would, he, once the white man laid with the, uh, the uh, Hebrew woman, then, or the Edomite woman, he was no longer an Edomite. That person is no that had that baby. That person is no longer an Edomite. That is a Gentile. So you can't call Esau a Gentile because he's not a Gentile. He's a Hebrew. You can't change your pedigree. Come on. Because I, you know, the reason why I'm saying it because I get messages literally every week concerning this. I mean, they call me all type of names and everything. Calling me, you don't know what loving and all this. I'm like, man, just use a little common sense. Let's go now. Let's go to, because uh, you finished that verse 8, right? Yes, sir. Now, the Lord said he's going to settle the controversy over Zion. You got us saying that we are the Israelites. That land belong to us. You got the ones that call themselves Jews. They say the land belong to them. You got the ones that call themselves Arabs. They say the land belong to them. But the Lord is going to settle that controversy. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. Ezekiel 20. I'm sorry, Joel. Get a little fired up. Joel, thank y'all. Joel 3. Joel 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Joel 3 and 1. Go ahead and read. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah uh -huh. and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations 
and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now look, <laughs> he said he's going to bring back the captivity of Ju uh, uh, Judah and Jerusalem. So now if he's going to bring back the captivity, that means he's going to take them out of captivity. He said, I will also gather all nations, will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. When did this happen? Hmm. According to the preterists, they said that this happened already. No, sir. No, you know, the brother, he kind of he bagged out in the debate. I see why. When I start dropping these scriptures on you, it's going to be a uh, uh, bye-bye time for you. <laughs> and all this preterism and foolishness you got going on. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Verse yes, 2 sir. again. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Uh-huh. And will plead with them there, there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Uh-huh. Whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. And they have now, wait a Who scattered the children of Israel and parted the Lord's land? The ones that called themselves Jews. The Arabs, the Jews, the Amorites. These are the people that's been part in the Lord's land. Yes, sir. And they're not black, are they? They're not black. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. Uh huh. And they have cast lots for my people. Uh huh. And have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine and that they might drink. Go ahead. Yea. And what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon and all the coast of Palestine? Uh huh. Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye re recompense me swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your he own said, you head. You can't even pay me back for what you have done to my people. You can't pay me back for what you've done to my people. You're going to pay for it. All the coast of Palestine and, and Zidon and Tyree, y'all are going to pay for the things that you have done to my people. We're going to come back here a little bit later. We're going to come back here a little bit later and pick this back up again. Let's go to Ezekiel now. Let's go to Ezekiel the 20th chapter. Ezekiel 20. Because like I had uh, posted on Facebook, you know, people don't understand that the Lord, when he returns, that's one of the reasons why he's returning is to come and get his people. But when he uh, comes, when he returns to come and get his people, he got a little gift for the rest of the nations. He got a gift for you. We, uh, we had Ezekiel 20 and 5. Ezekiel 20 and 5. Nobody's going to go on punishment. If we had to take our punishment, you're going to take yours too. You're going to get it. That's why I'm not worried about nothing. I ain't worried about nothing. All this stuff they holler, hooping and hollering about uh, Trump this and Trump that and this president that and this president that. I'm not worried about it because the Lord is still in control. Amen. Of all the nations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not just the United States, but all the nations. Ezekiel 20 and 5. Ezekiel 20 and 5. Go ahead and read it. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, uh -huh. and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up my hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. Uh -huh. In the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth, of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, uh -huh. flowing with milk and honey, uh -huh. which is the glory of all lands. Oh, you see this land? He gave Israel the glory of all lands. Yes, sir. That was once the land of Canaan, which became the land of Israel. This is how much the Lord loved his people. He said, he gave them the glory of all lands. Don't you know we're going back to the glory of all lands? The land of Israel? It is inhabited right now by strangers. I don't know if people are going to say, well, that's kind of far-fetched, Brother Rodney. But that's okay. Just listen up. And we'll see how far-fetched it is. Let's go now. Because he gave them the glory of all lands. Right? Let's look at Jerusalem for a little bit here. Get that slide ready. Let's go to Psalms 122 first. Psalm 122. And we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Psalm 122 and 2. Psalms 122 and 2. When you get it, go ahead and read it. 
Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Uh huh. Whither the tribes go up, uh -huh. the tribes of the Lord into the testimony of Israel. Uh -huh. To give thanks unto the name of the Lord. But there are set thrones of judgment. There are set thrones of judgment. Go ahead. The thrones of the house of David. The thrones of the house of David. Now we're going to take a look at this slide right here because I want to just show you something. Uh, this is Jerusalem in the ancient days. You got a good picture? This is Jerusalem in the ancient days during the time of the first century. These pictures right here are Jerusalem. And this is modern day Jerusalem. See how it is a city, even back there in ancient times, it was a city that is compact together. And even in modern times, it's still the city that is compact together. And so we know exactly what land we're talking about. We are talking about Israel, and we're talking about the capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem. And like I said, it was compact together in the ancient days, and it's still compact together. And we're going to show you that this is the land that our forefathers uh, uh, resided in, and this is the land that we shall reside in in the future. Israel has got a homecoming coming. We got a homecoming going. Everybody understand? Amen. Let's go now. Let's go to 2 Samuel, the fifth chapter, because he said there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Now, we're going to deal with David a little bit because this city was also called the city of David. So let's go to 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because David, when he went, at this time, he went and took this city from the Canaanites. 2 Samuel 5 and 1. And David, David was a valiant warrior. Yes, sir. I mean, he beat down all his enemies. He beat down all his enemies so bad that the Lord, because he was going to build a house for the Lord, and the Lord said, no, David, you got too much blood on your hands. He was a valiant warrior. So he allowed his son Solomon to build uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, temple. So we are 2 Samuel, the fifth chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David and to Hebron and spake, uh -huh. saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Uh -huh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thou was he that leadeth, up, leadeth out of the brook. Excuse me. When Saul was king over us, thou was he that led up out and brought up in Israel. Uh -huh. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. And thou shalt be a captain over Israel. Go ahead. That was one of the greatest kings that Israel ever had, man king. And that was David. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron. Uh-huh. And King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned. Now you notice something. He was 30 years old when he began to reign because that's when a man really starts his ministry. Yes, An Israelite starts his ministry when he's 30 years old. Go ahead and read. David was 30 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 40 years. Uh, that's a long time, ain't it? Yes, 40 years. They must have really loved David, boy. Because look, if you are a king that people don't like, they're going to try the first way to try to get you out of there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he said, look, David reigned 40 years. Go ahead and read. And he reigned 40 years. And in Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. Uh -huh. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. Go ahead. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem to Jebusites. Now stop right there. Who are the Jebusites? These are Canaanites right here. He said, and the king and his men went to, the, to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites. Go ahead. The inhabitants of the land. The which, inhabitants of the land. What land? The land of Canaan, which later became Jerusalem. Go ahead. 
The inhabitants of the land which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, uh -huh. thou shalt not come in hither. Go ahead, say, you know, except you take away the blind and the lame, you're not coming up in here. Well, what happened? Thinking, David cannot come in hither. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. David took the stronghold of Zion. And then what did he do? Turn around and call it his name. Go ahead and read. The same is the city of David. Oh, so Jerusalem, Zion, that's the city of David. Yes, sir. So this is where we're going back. It's called Zion, Jerusalem, the city of David. Now, let's, we're going to read about Zion here for a minute. We're going to read about Zion. Go ahead and read that. Yes. And it's a reason why we are reading about Zion, which is Jerusalem. It's a reason why. Go ahead and read. This is the Revealed Bible Dictionary. It says Zion. Originally, Zion was south southernmost of the hilltops of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Their fortified stronghold was taken by David. It says, and became known as the city of David. After Solomon built the Jerusalem temple on its site north of the citadel, and the, and the name Zion was extended to incorporate the temple mount. Uh -huh. The name... The name continued to be extended, becoming a metaphor for all of Jerusalem as the religious capital of Israel. The religious capital of Israel is what? It is Zion, which is Jerusalem. Now, you know, like I said earlier, we're reading this for a reason. Because we're going to show you that this is where our people are going to when the Lord returns. Let's go now. Let's go to Psalms 48 chapter. Psalms 48. Psalms 48. And we're going to pick it up at verse uh, uh, 1. Psalms 48 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Uh, in what? In the city of our God. What is the city of our God? That is Jerusalem. Yes, sir. That is the city of our God. Go ahead and read. In the mountain of his holiness. Uh-huh. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth. Stop right there. The joy of the whole earth. Jerusalem is. Go ahead and read. Is Mount Zion. Uh-huh. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Skip down to verse 8. Go ahead. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of our Lord of hosts. Uh-huh. In the city of our God. In the city of our God. Go ahead. God will establish it forever. Uh-oh. Selah. Uh-oh. We just went to a different, uh, uh, we just went to a different time period. Hmm. He said God will establish it forever. Yes, sir. That takes us, that takes this belt beyond us. He's going to establish forever. Let's go to, uh, we're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to this. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Deuteronomy 32, because uh, what happened to the, Is the Israelites? The Lord scattered them throughout the nations. See, that's how we know that the one that called himself a Jew ain't a Jew. Because he was not scattered among the nations on ships. It's just that plain and simple. We had Deuteronomy 32 and 26. Deuteronomy 32 and 26. When you get it, go ahead and read it. I said I would scatter them into corners. Now he, he said he was going to scatter who in the corners? The children of Israel. Yes, sir. Go ahead. What else are you going to do? I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among I'm men. I'm going to make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. That's why nobody really calls us Israel except us. Right. We start telling people we Israel. No, y'all ain't Israel. Y'all crazy. <laughs> but then we can read this book, though. Right. That's what's shocking everybody. We can read this book. <laughs> what, I remember one time Gentile told me, Say, uh, 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 y'all a cult. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> we were working on the truck, you know. So I said, okay, when we get out, out of here, I'm going to show you who the cult is. 
And I opened up that book and started reading it to him. He was like this. <laughs> looking at me, looking at the book like, like you know, yeah, we might, we could, we're caught all right, but we can read this book though. He's like, yeah, you read it. <laughs> and that's one thing can't nobody stop. I don't care who you call yourself, who you think you are, you can't stop that. Right. You can read that book. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. What verse we have? Read that verse 26 over. I said I will scatter them into corners. Uh -huh. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Nobody calls us Israel no more. Nobody but us. Everybody else, like I said, think that we are crazy. But we're going to show you that we indeed, have, if you haven't learned already, you will see today that we are the children of Israel and we have a home going that's coming. Yes, sir. Let's go to uh, let's go to Jeremiah the thirty-first chapter, Jeremiah thirty-one, because the Lord He said He was going to scatter Israel, but He also said something else He was going to do for the children of Israel. We at thirty-one, Jeremiah thirty-one, and we're going to pick it up in verse ten, Jeremiah thirty-one and ten. It's a little chilly in here today. It's, our weather is really summer. First one day is summer, next day is winter again. <laughs> Praise the most high God. Jer Jeremiah 31, and we're going to pick up in verse 10. So, so we know that the Lord is the one who scattered Israel. But look at what he said right here. There, Jeremiah 31 and 10. Go ahead and read it. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations. I, see, you know, our God, he does things and says things on a worldwide level. You know, I'm talking to all, I'm talking to everybody. You understand? Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations. Uh-huh. And declare it in the isles afar of off. Now, is this talking about just Jerusalem? Come on. They ain't talking about just Jerusalem. He's saying, hear all you nations and declare it in the isles afar of off. Say, and say what? And say. Uh-huh. He that scattered Israel will gather him. Uh-huh. And keep him. As a shepherd does his flock. He that scattered Israel will gather him. So we know that the Lord is the one that scattered him. But the one that scattered him is the same one that's going to gather him. Now let's see who this is that's going to gather him. Let's see who this is. Let's go to Genesis the 49th chapter. Genesis 49. Let's see who's going to uh, gather his people. Genesis 49, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Genesis 49 and 8. Go ahead and read. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Uh -huh. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Uh -huh. Judah is a lion's whip. Judah is a lion's whip. Uh -huh. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Uh -huh. He stooped down. He couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? Go ahead. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, uh -huh. until Shiloh come. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a law given from between his feet until Shiloh come. Go ahead and read. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And unto Shiloh shall the gathering of the people be. Now who is this Shiloh? Y'all weren't supposed to tell him yet. <laughs> <laughs> this Shiloh, we're dealing with Jesus right here. We're going to show you. Look what else is said about him. Now we now you won't find out this really this Shiloh is Jesus. Verse 11. Go ahead and read it. Binding his foal into the vine. Uh -huh. And his ass's coat into the choice vine. Go ahead. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grace. Stop right there. See, do you see that? He went from, from the time of the first century all the way beyond us. He said, binding his fold unto the, to the mind and his ass coat unto the choice mind. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grace. Did Jesus do this the first time he came? He didn't do this the first time he came. 
But he bowed and he, he bowed up his bowl unto the vine and his ass coat unto the choice vine. Then it went beyond us and said, look, he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Looks like it's going to be some damage going on. Because don't nobody tell you about this part of Jesus that when he returned, he's going to fill places with dead bodies. Everybody think Jesus is going to come back like this and then just rapture people up off the earth and that's going to be it. Uh-uh. When the Lord returns, he's going to shake this world off its axles. And then the world is going to know that he is the Lord. Verse 12, go ahead and read. His eyes shall be red with wine uh -huh. and his teeth white with milk. Go ahead. 13. All right, we're going to stop right there. Because we're going to go to uh, Matthew, the 21st chapter, and show you who this is. Matthew, we already know who it is, but we're going to show you anyway. Matthew 21, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Matthew 21 and 1. Matthew 21 and 1. Go ahead and read it. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethlehem unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, uh -huh. saying unto them, Go unto the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a, a coat with her. Uh -huh. Loose them and bring them to me. Go ahead. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord has need of them. And straightway he will send them. Go ahead. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek and send upon an ass, uh -huh. and a coat, the foal of an ass. Didn't we just read that in uh, Genesis 49 chapter? We just read that. That this one is going to come uh, on, on the coat in a fold of an ass. We are reading about none other than Jesus. Go ahead and read. Six. Uh huh. And the disciple went and did as Jesus commanded them. Skip down to verse nine. Go ahead and read. And the multitude that went. I tell you what. Just go ahead and read on through this. Verse seven. Go ahead and read on through. And the disciple went and did as Jesus commanded them. Uh huh. And brought the ass and the coat and put them. On them their clothes. Go ahead. And they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the branch from the trees. Now this is the first half that we look at of that verse in uh, Genesis the 49th chapter. In verse uh, uh, what was that? Verse 12. I mean verse uh, uh, 11. That was a, we looking at the first half where you're going to bind and coat the bowl of an ass. We didn't get to the second part yet. We say he's going to uh, wash his garments in the blood of grapes. We didn't get to that part yet. Just hold on though. Because this is how, when he, when he washes his uh, uh, garments in the blood of grapes, this is how he's going to free Israel. Think we have a problem up here? This is how he's going to free Israel. Because he's going to have to come and uh, demolish this man to free his people. Go ahead and read though. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. In the multitude that went before and that followed uh -huh. cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. Hosanna is in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, uh -huh. Who is this? Who is this? Go ahead and read. And the multitude said, this is Jesus. Now he said, the multitude said, this is Jesus. Now, you know, some people got a problem with this name, Jesus. You understand? Uh, we call him Yahweh, Yahweh, all type of Yahs. <laughs> you understand? We, we don't have a problem with that. But we call him Jesus. Why? Because we speak English. And then that Yahweh this and Yahweh Yah that and stuff, that is uh, Yiddish that y'all speak. That's not real Hebrew. But we're going to show you why we call his name Jesus. But go ahead and read. And the multitude said, this is Jesus. Uh-huh. The prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Now, 
Let's go now. Let's go to Luke the 13th chapter. Luke 13. Because you know, because uh, uh, you know, Jesus tried to gather the people when, uh, 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 when he came, but they would not. So we had Luke 13, and we're going to pick it up at verse 34. Luke 13, and we're going to pick it up at verse 34. He tried to gather the people. 13 and 34. When you get it, go ahead and read it. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets, and stoned them that are sent unto thee. Uh -huh. How often would I have gathered thy children together? As a hen doth gather her broad into her wing, uh -huh. ye would not. But ye would not. He said, how often I would gather you as a broad under her wings, and ye would not. So he tried to gather them, but they would not gather. They, 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 they wouldn't come together. Go ahead and read. 35. Uh-huh. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Uh-huh. And verily I say unto you, Ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Uh-huh. And it came to pass. As he went... I'm sorry, stop right there. He said, Blessed, behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I said to you, Ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. That's what men are going to be saying when we make his second return. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Let's go now. Let's go to Isaiah the 42nd chapter. Isaiah 42. Uh, let me straighten that out. Isaiah 42, and we're going to pick it up at verse 21. Isaiah 42 and 21. Everybody got it? We move a little fast, aren't we? We're going to get out of here early, maybe. Isaiah 42 and 21. Let me get it. We got a little distracted there. Go ahead. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Uh huh. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. See, that's what the that's what the problem is with people. Not only with Israel, but all nations. Nobody wants to keep the law of God. But he said, I'm gonna magnify it and make it honorable. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. 22. Uh-huh. But this is the people robbed and spoiled. Uh-huh. They're all of them stared in hold. Go ahead. There are hid in prison houses. Now you know who are hid in the prison houses. Well, we might to tell you that, do we? Go ahead and read. They are for prey. Uh-huh. And none delivereth for spoil. Stop right there. He said, they are for prey and none delivereth. Who have delivered our people? No one. Nobody has delivered our people. We're going uh, uh, to show you a slide right here. Uh, just pull that slide up real quick. Get it ready. He said, they are for a prey and non deliberate And nobody, many men have tried to deliver our people. A lot of men have lost their lives trying to deliver our people. But we have not been delivered from this hell hole that we've been in. That God put us in. Hold on one second. Okay. Yeah, uh, we need. Can you, uh, sister? Yes, sister. Can you? Uh, yeah. Can you? <laughs> yeah. They yeah. 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 Maybe you might want to take another seat there. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Go ahead and read that verse over again. Verse 22. But this is the people robbed and spoiled. Uh -huh. They're all of them snared and hoed. Uh -huh. They are hid in prison houses. They are for prey and non deliverance. They are for prey and non deliverance. Uh -huh. For a spoil and uh -huh. non self restore. Uh -huh. So turn your mic down just a little bit, brother. Turn it down just a little bit. I'll just read it softly. All right, okay. All right, go ahead. Who among you will give ear to this? Uh huh. 
Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Go ahead. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robber? Uh-huh. Did not the Lord? See, God had done his fault to us. That's why none have delivered. And we have not been restored. Because God has done this to us. And no matter how much melanin skin you got, and how smart you think you are, and how smart you think black people are, you're not smarter than God. Because he's the one who put us in this captivity and he is the one that's going to restore us. You know, you got all these people, comedic community and all these new Wapians and all these different people talk about what they're going to do to save this people. And you got even one brother keep talking about he's going to put together a, 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 a put together a militia, a modern day militia, and he's going to fight. And I'm like, you're going to get all, you and all these people killed. God put us in this position, and this is where we're going to be until the Lord comes. Now, I know some people say, well, he got that old slave mentality. No, I don't. I'm reading your book today. And if you want to call that slave mentality, that's fine, but I'm still going to read this book. This is God's mentality. Yes, sir. So he said, who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Ain't nobody listening to this. You think the Gentile hearing this? You think the Asian people that took our people to captivity hearing this? The Europeans, the Africans, because we have been in slavery amongst all the nations. You think they trying to hear this? They're not trying to hear this. Who are here and hearken for the time to come? Because if they understood what they were doing and who they had in their possession, then they would let us go. But then it ain't time yet, though, is it? It ain't time. It's not time until the Lord returns. Go ahead and read. 24. Uh-huh. Who gave Jacob 